and uh, there's some like some in-house like I've worked some in-house places where we go full contact because and that's a different story right there too because uh, you know in usually in those type of jobs you encounter the super robo rena cops you know the ones who want to be cops so bad but that's as close as they'll ever get and usually those are the ones that make the rest of us look bad but uh enough about that like i said uh tales from the guard shack is coming in 2019 and it should be a lot of cool stories you know we're going to talk to a lot of different people i've met a lot of different people over the years and um not only that i mean we're going to take uh we're going to take it on the road basically wherever we go i'm going to make it a point to I see a guard, I'm going to try to talk to him, I'm going to try to get him on the show. I mean, I understand a lot of people may not want to do that because, well, uh, well, bottom line is, site, okay, uh, name of companies and specific, you know, site-specific details will never be given out. And um, because, well, you know, those people are making a living out of that. We don't want them to lose their job, right? <laughs> so, um yeah it's been a crazy ride so uh pato's powerhouse cursory overload and now tales from the guard shack i mean it's uh not bad and uh i feel that uh, we've accomplished a lot even though like i said we're not doing this full time like like we would love to because well you know how it is um we have to work so uh tales from the guard shack if you got stories if you're a security guard or you know a security guard or you've been, worked in the field in the past or you know or heck you know someone that knows somebody that and you got a story hey share that with us uh let me give you the text number one more time Pato's powerhouse text line six zero two five two nine seven two seven three Alrighty, and uh, pdgpodcast.com is the website. You can go to the contacts section, and um, there's the email. There's the number again, and you can, or you can send me directly a, an, an email at pdghostwriter, p-d-g-h-o-s-t-w-r-i-t-e-r at gmail.com. Um, let's see. Well, like I said, I'm just very excited that it's been a full year i apologize for taking down episodes i mean it would have been cool so you could see the beginning and what we're doing now i feel that uh we're improving i mean uh and i would like to hear that from you too let me know if that if you think we're improving or what you know just crazy things uh as i speak right now i'm taking a break i'm working as always and this place where i'm working right now there's a lot of dust so I'm having a oh, you know, hard time here. It's starting to get crazy to breathe, you know, because I feel like I, I'm eating dirt here. But hey, that's what you do when you're working in that line of field, you know, in security. So, um, 2019 Tales from the Guard Shack. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. I mean, because I. How can I say without? Uh, I I want to save my stories for for that podcast, but I mean, working in this field for so many years, I've encountered so many people from so many different walks of life. Some of them cool, some of them are total assholes. Like I said, some are academy rejects that never made it in the police department, so they became security guards trying to make up for what they couldn't do with their lives and they usually those people are the ones that make us look bad because they're all gung-ho well not gung-ho i mean there's nothing wrong with being professional being courteous and treating people with respect because i've discovered that when i do that i get the best response you know uh one example is let's say i used to work downtown phoenix and some of those uh, buildings where they got like parking garages that have like underground parking that goes down and they have ramps so of course skaters love that i mean i used to see some of the older guys you know or not necessarily older but 
the guys that had that robo rent a cop mentality go out there chasing them just kicking them out and in a very you know very how can i say very stupid way i guess you know just going out there like like you punks better get out of here or i'm gonna call the cops i mean i discovered real quick that uh I, I got a better response when I I usually w- would go up and like hey what's up guys and they're like oh look I know this I know this is fun and I know you you know you're, you're just out here you know trying to have fun a lot of them used to bring their little video cameras and they do their tricks look I get you man but but we can't have you here you know and I would talk to them and eventually it got to the point where they're like, okay, mask, cool, we'll leave. And they would leave. They would go to the next building, so they'd become the other person's problem. Uh, there was a couple buildings that were by the same security guard company. And we would just kick them off to the next building, and they'd go, and they'd become a problem. And then I'd get a phone call like, thanks a lot, asshole. You send them over my way. I'm like, yeah. Figured you needed something to wake you up. Well... <clears throat> that's about as much as I'm going to talk about in this uh, episode about that because like I said I want to save my security guard stories for the new podcast coming in 2019 uh, Tales from the Guard Shack and um, uh, like I said I just wanted to give a big shout out to each and every single one of you that's listening because you guys are you know you make it worth it you make doing this worthwhile Thank you to all of you who've taken the time to, you know, send an email, text message. I mean, yeah, I've had a couple emails where, you know, uh, that we just hit delete right away because there's always some clown and some jackass that will, you know, just spread his negativity because they have nothing better to do. But all of you that have sent a good, um, you know, a word of encouragement, you know, I, I... I am very thankful for those. I I appreciate that. Um, Oh, gosh. Well, as I take a sip from my monster drink to continue, um, I wanted to... Like I said, I am very grateful, and I'm, like, amazed that it's been over a year. And uh, we started this a year ago, and we're still here. Uh, Pato's Powerhouse uh, is going to continue, and uh, we're going to develop it into. Uh, it, like I said, we're this is you. You, you guys are witnessing uh, the birth. You guys, if you've been following, you witness the birth of my podcast, and uh, it, it's growing, developing stages. You know, we're. We're growing, we're bringing new ideas, and um, as I get settled in my place and I put some furniture together and get my digital turntables back up, I mean, I guess I'm going to start doing what I, what I did, you know, I'm going to start mixing some beats and start scratching, and just because, well, I miss it, it's therapeutical for me, and I don't know, it might be fun for you to hear you know what inspired me to do this is that at the end of one of my favorite podcaster shows he usually gets his guitar and he riffs so a big shout out to mark Marin, who has no clue i exist but listening to his show has been very therapeutic for me and like i say he's one of my mentors he doesn't know it yet because obviously i mean i'm pretty sure he hears that from a lot of people a lot of wannabe podcasters dude you're like my idol you're like my hero but uh, quite honestly, like I said, I started listening to WTF and uh, yeah, I, I like it. You know, it's a good vibe, especially, you know, when I'm working and I've learned a lot from um, listening to WTF. So one of the things he does at the end is he takes his guitar and riffs. Well, I don't play guitar, but uh, I used to mess around with the ones and twos. Now, because I've gotten older and I have no, I live in my house, I don't have the space to have like the whole full system. I've got one of those little Newmark mix track systems, which I've got to learn. It's not the same as vinyl. I mean, gosh, I miss vinyl. I miss records. But uh, yeah, I'm going to start doing that. And at the end of the show, just end my shows with a 
a scratching session, you know. So look forward to that in 2019. And I hope you guys are listening. And I want I'm going to be gearing towards that direction. You know, I'm going to be talking to a lot of uh, hip hop, local hip hop here in Phoenix. I'm going to search out because there's a lot of talent here. You know, you know, people that uh, hopefully have music that we can play and I won't we won't get in trouble for doing so. Gosh, that's another thing, you know, so I, I, I wanted to play music and stuff like that when I first got into this. Then I realized that there's all these little rules and things and because they're downloadable, you can't like you, you have to follow all these freaking rules. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Um, just wanted to say thank you for being here all year long. All of you who, like I said, continue to listen, continue to put up with me. Thank you very much. I am very grateful. And uh, hopefully 2019, you'll continue to listen and be there, be with us. I mean, uh, listen to Pato's Powerhouse, uh, listen to Cursory Overload, Tales from the Guard Shack. And I'm pretty sure we're going to develop more because this thing is addictive, it's fun. Almost like those uh, doing videos on TikTok, which, by the way, PDGP Network, uh, uh, that, that's the handle or my, yeah handle we use in TikTok. So, or just go to the page, go to PDGPodcast.com, go to the links page, and there's going to be a button there that says TikTok, and you get to see Pato making a fool of himself. But I love it. I have fun. I, when it's all said and done hey i'm doing what i love so i hope that you listening there you know i hope that if you're listening to me i hope i can encourage you to go out there and do that thing that you've been putting off that thing that you've said that ah i'm too old you know you're never too old you're alive you know what do what do do that thing that you've always wanted to do because regret is a horrible thing Regret is something that, God, it it eats you up inside. Like, oh, I should have done this. I could have done this. God, I recently, when a person that I cared for very much passed away, uh, I encountered that regret. It was a friend, but part of the problem, like I said in that episode, it was a tribute to him, a uh, sound engineer awesome producer uh, DC Seville I mean uh, someone told me years ago that he had passed away and I didn't follow up on it I didn't go back to check because well there's more of a backstory there I mean obviously uh, he's also a pastor so I and I used to be a Christian rapper and when my life fell apart I decided that I could no longer I alienated myself from anybody that was church affiliated and when i heard that he died i was like oh, i want to go find out but i don't want to i don't want to get counsel i don't want people asking me about how you doing and then me have to say well my life fell apart i ended up in divorce this that and then people have people try to counsel i just didn't want to go through any of that so because of that i didn't follow up on that and it turned out to be false because he passed away this uh, November 14th, uh, 2018. So anyway, long story short, I just rambled on here. Uh, that thing that you've been putting off on doing, go out there and do it. Because regret sucks. So uh, go ahead, have fun. If it's uh, painting, do your painting. If it's music, do your music. If it's podcasting, hey, even hit me up. You know, I'll, I'll I'll plug you in. Let people know about your podcast show. Um, with that being said, live each day like it's your last one because it very well could be. Take the time to be with your loved ones. Tell them you love them. Show them you love them because, well, that's the neat junk that makes life worth living. Till then, or till next time, see ya. <laughs>